here I like to place my barrel with a lower handguard retainer on something flat and then you can put it in your trunnion or your receiver in this case and you can either tap the end of the barrel with a, a dead blow hammer or a brass mallet or something kind of lightly tap it and it should keep it stuck in there just enough for you to get to the press and get everything set up and press it in All right, I got my barrel pressed in. I took it to work and actually chucked it up in the lathe and used some memory cloth and sanded a little bit of the diameter off, about a thousandths off of it. So the interference fit or my press fit was about a thousandths and three tenths, thousandths or whatever. It depends on your, your touch there, your feel with your micrometers. Anyway, thousandths to a thousandths and a half is perfectly fine for a breech block and a rear sight. You start going over that, getting close to 2,000, so you get more into a brooch instead of a interference fit or a press fit. Your gas block and front side, about a half thousand. So they don't need a lot of pressure, just something. You know, they shouldn't just go on by hand, but just a little bit of pressure they should go on. But thousands, thousands and a half for your breech block and for your rear side is what they're specced at. Now, there is no minimum for the bolt locking up on a go gauge. Now there is no gauge in here right now and the bolt is stripped. And when I say zero, there's no minimum. That's there's no took no effort to do that. You know, it'll it'll close up just like that, no problem. Without it'll close on its own. That would be considered zero. And then no more than 33 pounds of pressure. Just as it goes, all go, there shouldn't be any lock up press. It should just all slide in there with no more than 33 pounds of pressure. Probably cut that in half. You'll be good to go. But how do you do that without a force gauge? I don't have one. They're outrageously expensive. You can rig stuff up. Might work all right. But I've seen them come from factories and stuff where they close just as easily as this did right here without a gauge with a go gauge. I've seen them close that easy, but they won't close on a no-go. Now, if you were to really press on them, yeah, they'd probably go. That still would be considered fine because, like I said, there's no minimum. Me, personally, when I'm building, because I build my own, obviously, I like to have them a little bit more snug. So that's how I have this one set up. Here's my go gauge. That's as far as it goes. Now there's a gap. That's as far as it goes without any effort. The bolt, I've got a little bit of, the bolt stops its rotation right there and the rest of it is just push it in. That's set up to where I know that that's in battery. I lap the bolts, everything has contact. It doesn't rotate any farther. It's not trying to lift up on me. A lot of people don't realize they set false headspace even with the carrier. When your bolts, you think it's rotating even because the carrier went all the way forward, but your bolt stopped on a section, and instead of rotating, it stopped, and now it's, it's, it's tipping over sideways, and then you can get it into battery. It's kind of like, oh, or the, the bolt or the carrier will go all the way home. And that's a false headspace. But I know right here, it stops. And as I push on it, it doesn't try to lift up on me. If it tries to lift up on you, well then that's probably because it's touching on something else in there. But I know I've got good contact in here. I can actually see the wear patterns. I showed them previously before. Got good patterns back here. Everything fits good. It's snug where I want it on here. It definitely will not close on a go or no-go. Here's a no-go. There's no way it's going to close. Nope. Just not going to happen. So, now, you can do an observation, and it's an observation only. It is not for setting headspace. 
but you can look and see just how far over all this cams by doing it this way. You don't set headspace this way because sometimes this stem back here of the bolt can be slightly off. The carrier will keep it all straight and aligned with the bore or the chamber there. So that's why you set headspace with the carrier. This is just for observation. I will observe that there is a gap here. And there is supposed to be one. People will say, well, what's it, the gap supposed to be? It's just supposed to be, not, well, it's got to be X amount of distance between here and there if you were to put some calipers on it. Nope, doesn't matter. It just needs to be a little bit of something there. If it goes all the way over and closes easily with zero effort, it's still not considered bad as long as it will not close on a no-go. If it does close on the no-go with it being like it, you might need to tighten it up a hair. But this is just for observation. I can look all around it, get light in there, and see that I'm making contact. Nothing wiggles. It don't. Now it's moving. But you can get it in there and get it pressed in. A little bit of effort there. and I've got good rotation around. This bolt only spins 38 degrees roughly for it to be in full battery. Well, that's good. Like I said, that's just for observation. I've observed that there is a slight gap there. There is no spec for the gap. You just observe that there is one. As long as it goes with the carrier. There we go. I'm going to consider that good. For me, typically when I shoot these and they're a little snug like that, usually they'll stay snug, but I have had some that will loosen just a hair. There can be a slight little burr somewhere that when you put pressure on it, yeah, it it goes into battery and everything's good to go for your headspace. But when you get the PSI pressure from actually setting off a live round, that may actually flatten that little burr that you didn't know about and can make your headspace a little bit more on the loose side, which is why I set mine just a little bit snug. Now, I'm not saying they have to be set that way. This is my personal preference for building. It's just how I do it. And typically when they move, they move more on the loose side than on the tight side. So, next is, since there's no hole drilled, all we got is this dimple. All we got to do is find this little dimple. We'll set this thing up nice and flat and drill it so we'll have a perfect hole. Typically with a used kit or something and you're trying to pick up that hole, you've either got to, it may not be perfect, you may have to actually find and mimic or chase that actual factory hole to get it to go straight. If not, then you'll drill good on this side and the other side will be a big old figure eight or look really nasty. That's just because something was off kilter. But this one, since there's no hole in here, it's going to be perfect. We get it perfectly flat, pick that hole up or that dimple, and we can just pop us a, a perfect barrel pin hole in there. So that's next. All right, the little dimple in here, the hole is an eighth inch. So you just put your eighth inch drill bit in there, pick that hole up. I used a level to make sure this was level since it's a virgin hole it ought to be perfectly straight through. If not, we ain't got to worry about any kind of mismatch right now. <laughs> it'll make a perfect hole. It'll be up to you making sure you got it straight or not.
All right, I got the rear sight put on. And these do not go flush back here. So either these ears are long or who knows, whatever. But anyway, I'm going to set it with my dust cover to begin with. It snaps on there. So, let's see what we got here. There. All right, all that went together. That sucker is smooth.
All right, I'm just about finished with the project, and YouTube's just about finished with gun channels. So I'm, I wasn't even going to finish the video on this, even though I've shot out. Oh man, several, several hours worth of video to do this little mutt build here. But we'll see. They'll probably end up yanking it all down. Whatever. I'll go ahead and finish this out. May not even make it to YouTube. So I'm going to get the trigger guard on with that Galil style trigger guard. You can't use the typical AK Builder trigger guard riveting jig. It will not fit in there. So a while back when I did my own Galils, I uh, machined one to work or at work to work for the Galil. So it comes in ha handy here. So I'll use that little doodad. Now we've got three holes, but that last hole would be right in the real thick part back here. So I'm just, just going to have two in there. It would put that rivet right in, right up next to that wall in there, and I'm just not going to do it. It'll hold with two. All right, let's put the knuckle in, I guess. Now I welded the original hole up in that knuckle. That way, I used solid carbide to drill through it, since so it welds a lot tougher. That way, the hole that I drilled is all going to match up perfectly, because the hole that was in this knuckle back here was kind of sloppy. It was oval, and so I figured in order to tighten everything up, I'll just go ahead and Go ahead and fill that hole up in the knuckle. Be done with it. Together and work quite nicely. These holes are so sloppy. Super, super sloppy. And it just how big the holes are in all this stuff. <laughs> but it works just sloppy as all hell oh well novelty gun anyway I really didn't want to use this grip it's all I got right now I don't want to put a mag pull on there because I want everything to be actual well, except for the US crap I have to put on it everything to be surplus parts so that's why I'm not putting, uh, I like a Magpul grip, but I wanted to put like a wooden, either a Russian or Chinese fat boy grip on it. Wood is what I wanted, kind of, I was going to stain everything, make it look nice. But whatever, you get to the point where you're just like, screw it, I don't care anymore, I just can put it together. I've been working on this thing for months, you know, off and on here and there. I'm tired of doing it. I'm going to put it together now. I don't even care what finish is on it. I'm going to leave it just like it is, I think. Of course, when it has the... This is not the pin for it. It's just a mock-up pin I made at work to, so I could do stuff. But we'll put this together kind of sort of right quick just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Oh, this is good and solid. This is... I'll have to do something with them holes. Make some sleeves or something to just fit in there basically shim it. That's horrible. But this part works. You can go ahead and put it together without the stuff in it just so you can see. 
just so you can see it. Like I said, this may not make it to YouTube, so I was, don't even, don't even, I don't even care to give a shit much anymore. Anywho, let's. I guess we could take that spike off there. I gotta go shoot it down. Woo! <laughs> Watch your eyeballs. <laughs> Anywho, all right, let's put it together. I said I gotta go shoot it. It's not drilled or pinned or anything yet. I've got me two lines put on here with electro pencil. I can see if it moves while I shoot it. it shouldn't? It's fairly tight. It's about a, it should be a half thousandth, but it's like a thousandth press fit. Yeah, let's do something with that. That's horrible. I might make me some little bronze sleeves or something to go in there. Anyway, what was I doing? I think I was going to do this. I think I was going to do this. Put that in there. Take this. Hold it right there. Grab. Rubber mallet. And well, Not a very stout spring in that thing. Ooh. Well, it's put together. It's been shot. A few things have changed. Some things are uh, changed out since it was a matching numbers kit that I was scavenging parts from. I changed out the uh, gas tube and the dust cover because they were actually marked with the same numbers as the rest of the kit. So I've replaced them. Luckily, this cover fit on here good, just like the one I set everything to. So the only parts I actually use from that M72 RPK kit are the pistol grip, lower hand guard, gas block, and a rear sight block. So I'm actually in search of, since the, all the other stuff is matching, I'm in search of now a gas block, rear sight block, and a lower hand guard. So that's the only thing missing out of a complete kit now, and I still have another gun to put together instead of whatever, because I only scavenge these few parts. Anyway, it's been put back together. A few things have changed. Like I said, the gas tube and the dust cover since I don't, it's a mud. I don't care about matching numbers on any of this stuff. I still have not put the actual pin in here that you uh, peen over, kind of like you do for your mag catch. It's not in there. It's still just a long pin that I made. I still have not drilled and pinned it. It has been shot, a verified uh, point of aim, point of impact, everything worked good. But I noticed before I went and shot it, when I tried to get my cheek weld at a, on a 100 meter setting, the rake was a little too much. You'll notice this is a different color from the very first uh, locking piece. Eh, on a 100 meters, I could not get my head or my cheek, my face smashed down hard enough into the stock in order to get a good sight picture good alignment of the sights so I happen to have another one so I actually since the other one that was on here was epoxied in I had to heat it up so it kind of barely melted the plastic there a little bit but oh well but I got it out put this one on here and this one locks up it was a little bit less sloppy even though it still had some slop in it it still does these things are for whatever reason the holes are just really big in them but this one was angled down just a little bit more. I don't know, it actually has longer tubes. I cannot find the other locking piece. I don't know what I did with it. It's been laying right here for a couple of weeks since I've done all this. And I have no idea where it is. So I can't show you the comparison. But this one does have longer insertion tubes for the actual stock itself, the aluminum pieces, that tubes that go in. And it seems to be angled down because now on a 100 meter setting I can actually get a decent cheek weld and everything. I can see the sights correctly. This one still uh, flopped around. But I did take the little pin to work. Pivot pin or whatever you want to call it. And I made a bushing. If it'll focus. There it goes. Made a bushing. I actually turned part of the pin down and then pressed that on there and then 
kept machining it down to where it would just slide in there you know by hand I didn't have to, to hammer it in or anything so that cleaned up the slop here so there's no more flopping around now it does flop a little bit because there's still a little bit of room in here you can see that gap the spring actually keeps it pinched to one side but it works now every galil I've ever had they've always been floppy because it's not you can shoot it in this configuration but it's not designed to be this way it's just for transport typically you would get wherever you're going to be deployed even though we're obviously not being deployed anywhere you just flop it open and then it would stay like that so it works now in this configuration works good with this locking piece on here thought about shimming this part but then I was scared since how the gap is on this side it might pivot it up that way and then I'm back to having a high rake and I can't see my sides good so I'm gonna leave it like it is it works it shoots fine I was going to actually come in and sand the wood, stain it, sandblast everything, parkerize it, make it all nice and pretty, but to be honest with you, I've got to where I like them looking all just horrible like this. <laughs> There's no grooves. All it is for your selector divots here is just an eighth inch ball nose end mill. Just come down and picked up the little divot in the actual selector and then moved it out of the way drilled in a little bit that was it there's still a slight gap here but I can't have it it's perfectly straight in line with this there's just a gap there because it's just a mismatch of parts and all the whatever doesn't have to be accurate because what are you going to make it accurate to it's a mutt build some of you may notice that there is actually the little mag catch spacer or stop being used instead of using the Galil one there was too much flop in here for the magazine, so I ended up actually cutting that tab off, the stop tab, and just using a typical AKM stamped receiver plate, stop plate, since it's flat on here, it doesn't have a typical milled hump in it. The M72 Yugo milled ones don't have that hump in it like the Galil's and everything else does. You know, a typical milled receiver. They're just flat across there. And will use an actual stop plate. So I got a stop plate in there. Everything works good. All works great. I'll take some pictures of it, but I haven't finished it. I don't know if I want to finish it. Now I'll take care of the bare stuff, obviously, but this is raw. This is aluminum, so it don't matter. But that's what it looks like. It's not real impressive, but it is what it is. I actually like it. It's heavy as hell. It's a tank. Still got to drill and pin this. Haven't got to that yet because a little detent pin for the muzzle nut's not in there yet. So I did end up having to mill into the spacer a little or the lower handguard retainer ring. Come on in, focus. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, there you go. Just a little bit at a slight angle. I didn't want to cut it in half. If I went too deep on these hand guards, it would completely split them in half. So this is barely can well you can probably tell right there it's canted down. If you're wondering, yes, the lower part of the gas block has been milled right where the cleaning rod capture part is, just to allow the spike to collapse or close where it is now. Just a little bit, but it locks in place, doesn't flop around. I actually ground the little tip down here at an angle going inward a little bit so if you grabbed up there you didn't poke the crap out of yourself but that's it not real exciting I'll take some pictures of it or something and put up there she is <laughs>